in the Brownlow. And Tony Shaw would emulate brother Ray by winning the Copeland. After Richardson, another long way up right. Collingwood would finish fourth and in the first Sunday final defeated Fitzroy at the MCG by 46 points. Will get there first. Turns around, can he make it two? He's already kicked one, that's a great goal. Still in play, McMullen sharks it. Has a snapshot of goal, that's the sealer for mine. A week later in the first semi-final, Dacos would engineer a 25-point win over Carlton. He'd kick seven. Down to half forward, Collingwood running. Neville Shaw, no one within 10 metres, chips it up the full forward. Dacos is there, can he make it six? Gets around Reed, shoots, it's coming round, it's there, I think, for mine. Goal! The preliminary final would be Kale's last game, and it was not one he'll remember fondly. The 133-point loss to eventual Premier's Essendon, the worst in a preliminary final. Again, Collingwood would look to Bobby Rose. The new Magpies came into power not long after that, and what they did, they, they overspent, there's no doubt about that. They were inexperienced in how to run a football club. They are almost uh, all business people but they decided that they would go out and buy a team. Now, you can't do that, but uh, they, they started something that really developed from then when we were able to go out, the coach was able to go out and, uh, and select players that he wanted. In 1985, he would add Brian Taylor to his team. The former Tiger relished the chance and kicked 80 goals in his first season. When the Magpies finished seventh, Rose too was under pressure. The feeling was, that he was warming the seat for his assistant, the former Hawthorne legend, Lee Matthews. After a third round trouncing by North, Rose announced his resignation in April 1986. His replacement, Lee Matthews. I'm facing facts, I'm coach of the senior side and we haven't, haven't won a game and that just is not good and I, personally I can't accept that. It would be the end too for Ranald McDonald. He left the club in dire financial straits. Into the presidential seat would come former treasurer Alan McAllister. I obviously didn't expect to be senior coach here until until next year, but uh, you can't always decide the circumstances under which a job is taken. And uh, I was asked to take over, and I was only too happy and enthusiastic to do it. Matthews had a massive job ahead of him. He attacked it with the same intensity that marked him as the greatest player the game had seen. This is where it's hard. This is when your legs ache. However you're feeling. Brian Taylor would kick 100 goals in 1986, the fourth magpie after Coventry, Todd and McKenna to reach the ton. Matthews would restore some pride, but a sixth placing in 1986 and twelfth a year later under a new captain in Tony Shaw was not what he had in mind. Ray Gate had captain, so that was one of my aims. and. Uh... I thought I was a chance, you know, I thought probably David Cloak had come to the club and had been captain of Richmond and uh, you know, I thought, well, it could have been out of the two of us, you know, there's no use lying about it and uh, when I got it, I was you know, really wrapped it. I didn't, I went up to Lee and I said, uh, you know, what, what do you want me to do with it? And uh, he said, just, you've got the captaincy because the way you play, you know, we don't want anything to change, which it just relaxed me that much after knowing that, that I didn't have to do anything different. I think, no doubt, the direction of the club changed once Lee got there, I, just little things like our training, well it's not a little thing, but our training picked up and I would have to say it had improved probably 60 or 70 percent on what it was. If two players typified the Matthews ideal, they were Darren Mullane, the incredibly tough wingman who, like the lethal Lee of old, could bust a game apart. And Peter Dacos, the genius, who like Matthews could manufacture a goal when it was most needed. Perivic got one hand to it. Oh, Dacos, here's a chance for a score. Mr. Magic shoots it, goal, I think it's there, first goal of the Magpies. In the bad days of 87, Mullane would shine and win a Copeland Trophy. He can score, well done son, beautiful passage of play and he's put it through for a goal. I think he had an aura about him where uh, he sort of dominated an opposition player. Um, I've seen a lot of blokes not play very close to him, um, but he, he just you know, had that thing, he was uh, very confident in his own ability. Um, Matter of fact, he, he was very rude in the way that he went about playing against opposition players. It was just that he, he felt that he didn't have to uh, lower himself in any way to play against them, and he just wanted to dominate them, which um, 
I, I just he had that arrogance about him, which a lot of great players have had. In 1988, as the Magpies again reached the finals, it was Dacos who would be Collingwood's club champion. That year, Collingwood finished second, but bowed out in miserable circumstances, losing in successive weeks to Carlton and Melbourne. It would be Melbourne in 1989 who would again end the Magpies' dream in the elimination final, Gavin Brown capping a superb year with the Copeland. 1990 had to be the year. It would start terribly in Perth with a loss to the Eagles and the suspension of new boy Tony Francis after this indiscretion on the boundary line. The next week, the season proper got away in many Collingwood fans' eyes. Carlton were thumped, Dacos at his best. Tapped the ground, tapped them! An open goal. Beautiful hand pass to Dacos. Goal number six coming up for Dacos. He's put it through, I feel. Yes, he has. Francisco got a fist to it. Brown still running. Oh, look at this boy go. The claim by Alma. Dacos to right. Is this another one? I think he's kicked it. Alban, Tudnam, the race is on. Tudnam uses the body nicely. Tries to spoon it out to Banks. Caught by Hannah and Alban. Tudnam again, on to Manson. The big man's clear. He shoots, and he has kicked a miraculous goal. He'll do something magical. Yes, out to the right, hook it back. Has he put it through? Yes, it's a goal to the Magpie. As it's tapped on beautifully, Gavin Brown's been great when the pressure's been applied. He goes short to half forward, it's fisted the ground. Banks off the ground, he's enjoyed Silvani being moved off him as he kicks it up to Dacos. Dacos against Tom Alvin. Dacos under the left foot, is this a miraculous goal? A brilliant effort by Dacos, goal number seven. The Pies were certainly more vigorous. Craig Kelly out for two weeks for whacking Mark Bays. There would be thrillers, None more so than the one-point win over St Kilda at the MCG in round five. 30 metres out, he steadies, shoots, he goes! The Magpies would be on the other end in round seven when they lost to the Hawks by two points. He's done it again! But then came the run, a streak of nine straight wins that showed the men of Collingwood at their very best. Adding one more stat. McEwen at the back. Oh, gee, nearly gets up, kicks a goal, and puts it through. Great effort from McEwen. Scott Russell from centre wing kicks long. Inside 50, McEwen comes out. He used that large body of his. Hocking had the ball and then lost it just as quickly. Morgan, a hurried hand pass. Bowen bounces once, twice. Won't get that. Dacos snaps. Snaps truly for a goal. Power. Not a good kick. Mullane with a chance. Still Mullane with power oh. and precision. And has he put it through? Yes. Losing a bit more. Mullane outside 50. Cornered by Eugle. Gets around Eugle and Wilson. Mullane for goal. A sensational kick. Russell from forward of centre. Kicks it to within 35 metres. Collingwood again swoop on it. McGuan. Beautiful kick by McGuan. Again, Collingwood would finish second. Against the Eagles at Waverley, Dacos would kick the goal of the year. Collingwood lifting. Ground right on the boundary line. Back to Mullane, likewise. Dacos nearly runs out of room. Oh, He's oh. gone! 